and over a million responded, more across France than greeted the liberation of Paris in 1944. They scaled monuments, flags and faces from a diverse nation. On the congested street signs, je suis musulman, je suis juif. I'm a Muslim, I'm a Jew. I think it's very important to be there, to fight against all the people who are trying to, to, to kill the liberty, to kill the democracy. Parents who brought their children. We came with our four children. We are very proud to bring them, to show the world that we are not afraid. We are at war and we are ready. A man who had travelled from London. My parents' generation uh, sat too quietly through another kind of fascistic period. And uh, I felt that uh, when this happens again, which it is in a different kind of way, that one must stand up and be counted. A visitor who joined the demonstration. It's not just a, an attack of a magazine. It's an attack of the whole freedom of speech. Away from the large crowds, the family of Ahmed Merabet held its own memorial. He was the policeman who was killed outside the magazine Charlie Hebdo. The family was applauded. His mother and brother listening as tributes were read out. At the Elysee Palace, President Hollande was greeting world leaders, sharing a moment of closeness with Angela Merkel. At the start of the big march, President Hollande embraced Patrick Pelou, the doctor who arrived at the magazine office minutes after the killings. Forty-four foreign leaders, including David Cameron, had gathered in the French capital, among them the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. They linked arms before briefly walking together. We're saying this is an appalling terrorist attack. It's an attack on the values that we hold dear to in Britain, about freedom of speech, about democracy, about tolerance, and we want to stand with you to make that point. The much bigger march followed, 